as we always do, we look at things that really make a difference to the way we live, the way we work, the way we survive, uh, the way we get better. Uh, and we, we found, uh, obviously, several things that did that, but this of all the things that the judges uh, looked at was the one we wanted to award because it's so ubiquitous. I mean, every day, every second of every day and every year, uh, there are more than 50 cameras made with this technology. I mean, it's amazing. So here we are sitting in the studio. We're surrounded by this technology. If we go to hospital, we're surrounded by the technology. If we go to, let's say, a, a laboratory, we're surrounded by it, or an uh, you know, a, a, a astronomic observatory. It's everywhere. Uh, and it's changing the way we behave and the way we live. And the key thing is the winner of this prize have not only to be an innovator, they also have to have benefited humanity on a global scale. Absolutely. So benefited humanity, but also on a sustainable basis. So in reality, that means, because it's engineering, invented something that has a commercial life, because that's the way to sustain uh, the innovation. What's nice about this prize as well is the age range of the uh, prize recipients, which shows that you know, one giant built on the shoulders of another giant. This took a long time to get to where we are today. Now, looking at the oil and gas sector, which you know very well, of course, we had an agreement to cut, sub cut production from OPEC just before Christmas. What are your expectations for the oil and gas sector this year? So o OPEC's agreement was a very important signal to the market that OPEC was going to try and shed the world of excess inventories, which is, which is happening. Uh, which is good news, which means that uh, things can become a bit more stable, not too volatile. But it does demonstrate that uh, the price of oil is, is not just dependent on day-to-day -day supply and demand, it's dependent on geopolitical activity, whether it's OPEC or whether it's crises in various parts of the world. So uh, I think you can never forecast the price of oil. What you can say is it's unlikely to go below something and above something else. And I think unlikely to go below uh, the levels we saw uh, the last time. We had a long uh, time of uh, weak oil prices, and if you're adjusted to in today's money, around 35 to 40 dollars, and very unlikely we're going to experience the highs of 100 dollars uh, that brought on so much supply that we had uh, excess inventories everywhere. Someone you know very well, Rex Tillerson, the former boss of Exxon Mobil, is about to become Secretary of State for Donald Trump. What's he going to be like in the job? What's he, what was he like as a competitor? My opposite number at Exxon was uh, uh, his predecessor, Lee Raymond, and uh, I found him a very fine man. I mean, Exxon produced very good executives, very clear, very well organized and uh, real executives. I'm sure uh, Rex, who I know uh, a bit, he overlapped with me a bit, uh, were, is just the same person. What is so good, of course, is to see people from different backgrounds coming into the administration. And I think uh, that diversity of background will be a positive for decision making. Now, someone else you know very well, of course, is Vladimir Putin. When you took BP into Russia all those years ago and uh, had dealings with him then, are you encouraged at the prospect of a rapprochement between the US and Russia? Uh, who wouldn't be? It's very important, I think, that we have you know, great relationships between powers, great and medium and small. It's very important indeed. So the big question is, on what basis is that rapprochement? Uh, and I think it has to be, surely, on the basis that Mr. Reagan said any relationship would be, which is, we'll trust, but we'll verify. 